Whether it's I would really prefer if you'd be quiet or this girl asking a runner to pause a game so she can talk about her grandma that died from cancer. Over the years, there's been a fair number of cringe moments in the speedrun community. I'm a frog, and today we're going to look at Halo speedrunning signature cringe moment, Cody Miller's 2011 Halo CE GDQ run. See, now I'm like actually legitimately lost. Yeah. A run that was such a train wreck, GDQ added a rule going forward called the Halo rule to prevent such a thing from ever happening again. But you may be asking yourself, who is Cody Miller and why was he speedrunning this game in the first place? At the time, Cody was in charge of the Halo speedrunning site, High Speed Halo.net. Highspeedhalo.net now doesn't have anything to do with speedrunning, but does have great articles like an introduction to the world of Halo figurines and top five most sexy Halo Cortana pictures. Halo runners now use haloruns.com. At the time, Cody was known for that site and for being one of the original Halo speedrunners with many world records. He was even mentioned in the Guinness Book of World Records for beating Halo 2 on Legendary in three hours deathless, which later turned out to be faked along with some, if not all, of his other records. He was a cheater and this run was the first step towards uncovering that. So when GDQ, which stands for Games Done Quick, a biannual speedrun event for charity, asked Cody to run Halo C live on Legendary, he probably should have refused. But he didn't, and the result was a comedic masterpiece we'll be looking at today. As for me, I am a Halo CE speedrunner. I'm fairly new to it though, and my best CE full game legendary time thus far is 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 41 seconds, which is good for 24th on the leaderboard. Not too shabby, but I still have lots of room for improvement. However, this is much faster than Cody's GDQ time, which ended up being over 4 hours, not to mention that he had to lower the difficulty twice and ended up beating it on normal. But we'll get to that. For some reason, I decided to put myself through watching this entire 4 hour run, and boy was it something. Being a runner myself, I'll break down some of the intricacies of how bad this run is, and I'll also show examples of how things are supposed to look, so if you don't know, you can fully appreciate the terribleness in front of you. Let's hop in. Yeah, like, I haven't seen any of the Halo tricks or anything, that's why. Don't get your hopes up, bro, you're not gonna see them here either. Cody's Pillar of Autumn actually starts off well. He messed up the first jump, pipe jump, and bonked into the wall, but hey, happens to the best of us, and otherwise this is good so far. Like, is Paul Miller you want to <laughs> yeah, he's serious time right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. can't get anything out of him. As we all know, the most entertaining speedruns are the ones where the runner doesn't talk at all or explain what they're doing. Boring is the best way to describe his Pillar of Autumn run. Wow. It's mostly him slowly killing all the enemies in each room. But he doesn't die at all, so if you're unfamiliar with the speedrun, you may think this is how it's supposed to look, and Halo runs are just boring and slow. For example, in this room, the classic strat was to stick one elite, throw plasma at the door, and make a break for it. Instead, Cody sits here for two minutes struggling to kill everybody. Even if you are going to try to clear the room, it should not take him this long. Also, why did Bro not grab the Magnum? Have you never played CE before? I managed to get a hold of the High Speed Halo World Records at the time of Cody's run, and the world record for Pillar of Autumn was 519. I timed Cody's here as 829. Not very good. That being said, Pillar of Autumn was far and away the level that went the best for Cody. It's all downhill from here. Cody starts off Halo by crossing the bridge. This is fine, that's what you're supposed to do, right? <laughs> Wrong! The first real trick of the game at the time was where you walk over here, do a grenade jump, and skip the bridge. This saves a couple seconds versus walking, but we mainly do it to skip a trigger. There'd normally be two Banshees and a Covenant squad up ahead that we now don't have to deal with. It's one of the easiest tricks in the game, and there's zero reason for a CE speedrunner not to do it. Unless they don't know how to do it. Let's see how he does. Oh, I'm the best. <laughs> oh no. Well, maybe now he'll do the grenade jump. Nope, he's just walking back across the bridge. Alrighty, got him. Now he can advance to the next area, why are you dropping the magnum? I didn't shoot. <laughs> Man, bro, maybe you wouldn't have died there if you could just headshot the elite when his shields are down. Oh, no. In this section today, we'll kill at least five of the six marines here to skip both dialogue and an entire dropship. One Halo speedrun meme you may know, as said by Paul Russell, Marty, he's killing the marines. But back in 2011, Halo runners didn't kill any marines here, which meant there was dialogue before every ship and you had five to take out. But even without modern grenade lineups, they're all fairly easy if you know what you're doing. You mainly just grenade the elites as they come out and clean up everyone else. On the first ship, Cody inexplicably runs to the left to take out jackals at grunts first, retreats, and then dies. Then dies again and says something you probably never want to hear in a live speedrun. I forgot, I, I forgot how to do this part. He then adopts the strategy I used as a five-year-old when the Covenant scared me, which is to be safe and stay on top of the structure. He proceeds to die anyway. It's actually the exact opposite. He's playing too passively. But like I said earlier, this run gives the impression that CE speedrunning is supposed to be slow and boring where you take your time. Man, this isn't going well. 
Yeah. Cody was also in the Guinness Book of World Records for making the understatement of the century. After a couple more deaths, Cody decided to do something not typically seen in a legendary speedrun, which is to change the difficulty to heroic. After struggling to start and refusing to say anything, Cody becomes more confident and starts talking about subjects like whether or not Halo Reach is canon. So I've just got a website, halo-reach-is-not-canon.net. <laughs> <laughs> The guy sitting to Cody's right was another speedrunner who was at GDQ to run Trials HD and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Even though he's not a Halo runner, he does his best to explain backpack reloading in a desperate attempt to make this run at least somewhat informative despite Cody's refusal to explain anything. Often you'll notice that you don't actually see Cody reload his weapon. And that's because you can, um, is it if you double tap reload? Yep, and, and then, then see it's full. Switch. Yeah. Cody successfully does a cutscene skip on the light bridge, but more importantly answers a question about what tricks he's going to do. Uh, does light ask, Cody, are you doing AOTCR fall, silent cartographer launch, and or keys shield bump? Keys shield bump, no. Assault in the control room, maybe. Silent cartographer, definitely. I don't know what's funnier, them feeling the need to ask if he was going to do basic tricks, or him saying yes to only one. I, I, would, I would go to Legendary for the library. Cody is saying he would raise a difficulty on the library. Keep this statement in the back of your mind. The rest of the level is easy enough, there's three areas where you're supposed to save marines, but if the marines die, the game lets you progress anyway, so it's fastest to just kill them at the first two areas and then move on. Do you want to explain why you're <laughs> shooting your own marines? Cody, can you please explain to the viewers what you're doing? No. While Cody was slowly clearing the last area, a donator decided to roast one of the guys on camera. Uh, Agatrod says, I'll donate five dollars if the guy with the long hair says, I make the best armor in all of Soul Titan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, after half an hour of just the second level, Cody's finally gotten through. Unfortunately, there are ten levels in Halo CE total. Just because I haven't practiced this game in like two years, this is pretty tough. Then why did you agree to do it? In runs now, we'll pretty much just run past this entire opening. In every old run I'd seen before, they'd stay back here and take guys out, so I figured Cody would do the same, but he attempted to rush and completely failed at it. He then walks off a cliff by accident. Expert commentary here, don't walk off the cliff. But it's okay, because now he's worked his way back and ready to push through. He did it again. That wasn't a replay. He actually did it again. He dies his third attempt too, but at least it was in a conventional way. Progress. Around the 50 minute mark, the chat starts asking if someone other than Cody can try to play. Bob the champ, but only Cody Miller will be playing Halo. No one else is taking the, the controller. After meandering his way through the level, which isn't ideal in a speedrun, Cody finally enters the Covenant ship. In Halo Runs today, there's a trick called Belly Skip that lets you skip this entire section as well as the next main room, formerly known as the RNG room. Even still, the belly isn't too difficult to take care of if you know what you're doing. On Legendary, there's 10 waves with random spawns. Some of these waves will have gold sword elites, while others will just be jackals and or grunts. When playing on Heroic, like Cody, instead of gold elites, you get stealth elites. Cody gives himself a dose of copium by arguing that stealth elites, which have no shields, are actually stronger than gold elites, the highest ranking elites in the game. In Legendary, those guys are gold, so it's actually, uh, it can be so much more difficult on Heroic. In the middle of all this, the stream receives a very special donation. And a uh, person said hi to you, Ghost Rope, donated five dollars also. Thank you. Yeah, Goat Trope. Yeah, Goat Rope. If you don't know who Go Rope is, he's a Halo speedrunner who's been around since the beginning. Pulling this run in front of him is the equivalent of butchering the Star Spangled Banner in front of Francis Scott Key. In the RNG room, there's three doors and you need one of them to open, except only the Covenant can open them. If you don't get a sleeping grunt spawn, you can try to bait and lead into opening one, or worse comes to worse, you can start clearing the room to spawn more waves and run through then. Cody instead wanders back and forth for a couple minutes before realizing he needs to get more enemies to spawn, and then he dies. Eventually he makes it through though, and now it's time for the first major embarrassing trick screw up of the run. So you're supposed to do a grenade jump here. The grenade jump that I had always seen was like this, where you throw two plasmas, one high, one on the floor, and then a frag. This doesn't kill us because we pick up the overshield, and while the overshield is charging up, you're invincible. From the second floor, you do another jump onto a dropship, then from the dropship, you do one more grenade jump to the third floor. I found a run from way back in 2007 that did it this way, so I know for a fact that this was a strat at the time of Cody's run. However, I also found old runs that did this. This is from famous Halo runner Subwhistle. This is three plasmas, and one frag to get you all the way onto the dropship. Cody does a weird amalgamation of this where he throws three plasmas like he's gonna do the dropship jump, but then he doesn't throw the last frag. The results are less than desired. Oh, not quite. Oh, damn it, I have to jump. You know what, we'll just do this normally. <laughs> 
Cody decides to stop trying. Not only does this mean he now has to fight all the way to the top floor, this also prevents another skip. After finding keys, you're supposed to fight back to the hangar and leave in a dropship. But if you grenade jump to the second floor, the triggers in the hangar break, and the mission ends once you kill the sword elites on the bridge. Instead, Cody just plays through the level normally while dying a bunch of times. You don't need to press that button. Oh shoot, I think you're right. I did press that button. Stuff up. No, you don't. Hurry up. Oh, yeah. Look, if you skip, the level ends here after this speech because it gets smooth uh, with the triggers. Yeah, thanks for telling us about the 15 minutes you didn't skip. Wait a sec, you got the ending skip anyway. Oh, wow. He actually did a skip, even if accidentally. That wasn't supposed to happen, but hey, after 37 minutes, he finally beat TNR. We are so back. Oh my god, we're only an hour and 20 minutes through this. I have three more hours of this shit. Silent Cartographer is probably the coolest I, I level in the game of speedrun and has been for a really long time. Cody actually knows what to do here. He's not good at any of it, but he knows what to do. Basically, you turn around at the start, grab this warthog, drive into the facility, and fling yourself through this door before it locks. Normally, you'd have to go to a different part of the island to unlock it, but with that and then falling off in such a way that we don't die, we skip a huge chunk of this level. Let's see how Cody does. Get through it, but if you go around, if you... Uh. Uh, It's pretty oh, slick if you see the uh, and uh, high speed halo. It's super cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. You actually got it. Let's see the fall off. Oh wow. Yeah, that skips a lot of levels. <laughs> now yeah, another <laughs> skip. Here comes the hard part. Eventually he gets it, then after messing up the simplest grenade jump imaginable a couple times, he gets an active camo and is able to run back to the top. Just Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I've already messed up. Oh, that's where I'm <laughs> You're about to log into this idea. Like, <laughs> Maybe an attempt to trick. What? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Alright, so this level still wasn't good, but at least it wasn't half an hour. On the Cody curve, this is a colossal W. Unfortunately, it's followed by maybe the biggest L of the entire run. Assault in the control room is a pretty simple level, especially back in 2011. So you fight your way through the first room to the bridge. From the bridge, there's a trick called Bridge Fall, which was the legendary strat for a long time, but now is only done on easy runs. There's three falls, the first one off the bridge, the second one onto a ledge, and then the third jump just to get down. The second jump is by far the hardest, and it's pretty tricky, but with a bit of practice, it isn't too bad. If you pull it off successfully, no enemies will spawn for the rest of the mission, and you'll be able to drive through the rest in just a few minutes. Cody gets through the first room pretty quick, actually. Let's see how many tries it takes him to get Bridgefall. Oh my god, he got it. Now he just needs to fall off the right way. You have got to be kidding me. A lot of luck. Very... Just to clarify, it's not luck. If you do it right, you'll hit it every single time. The absolute best guide for this trick is from Nervy Destroyer. I'll link his video in the description. After several minutes of trying, Cody gave up, and instead of beating the longest level in the game in about seven minutes, he now has to play through it in its entirety. And I have to sit through the entire thing. Hang on a second. Yeah. Damn impressive. <laughs> Pro gamer stuff right here, folks. Why are you waiting for a Marine to get in? You're literally getting out right up here. There's a skip here I was hoping he'd know about. He didn't, of course, but you can actually hop on this glass and get to the other side early. This skips like another five minutes at least. For Cody, it would have saved 17 minutes. Worth noting, Cody's time estimate for this run, the time that the event was planning around, was two hours. Now well past the two-hour mark, Cody is still on level five of ten. After several failed attempts, Cody steals a Banshee you're not supposed to get. Then this happens. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Epic music. He also tries to give himself a dose of copium. The rest of the levels are so much easier. We'll see about that one, Cody. What is this? What is that? What is this? And that's the story. You have got to be kidding me. He actually did it. It took him 43 minutes longer than it should have, but still, he actually did it. Uh, we're at 220. 220, okay. Right Let's see if we can do number three. Sorry, Cody, but both of us still have two more hours left of this. Thankfully, 343 Guilty Spark is a pretty quick level. The legendary world record at the time was 7 minutes, 32 seconds, and Heroic, which remember he's now playing on, was only 617. And this level at the time really just had one not very hard trick with a checkpoint right before it, so you could try it over and over again. So this should be a quick one, and he's already going the wrong way. In the speed run, you're supposed to go left at the start. On runs now, we do a grenade jump, but back in 2011, they were instead doing this jump off a rock. Either way, that would have saved him a bit of walking in combat. An easy trick... That that anyone can do that he just doesn't. 
play, you don't have a chance. Stop dropping the magnum. So this part of the game is when the twist happens and the flood is revealed, and this is the reveal room. This level isn't very hard, and Cody, despite a couple stupid deaths, is getting through it. Really, the only difficulty in this one is navigating your way through the facility, which is meant to be confusing. But for an experienced runner, that shouldn't be a problem. Wait, where is he going? This is back the way you came. What are you doing? There was grunts in the room before this one. See, now I'm like actually legitimately lost. Yeah. You agreed to speedrun this game, and you don't even know where to go. And you just died, and now we're all the way back to the start of the reveal room. Oh my fuck. Was, was actually manning the donation counter. He just did a grenade jump to get back where he started. He actually made it to the shotgun room. We are so back. So after this elevator he's on now, there's a trick called camo jump, or camo jumo, where we grab active camo, do a jump you're not supposed to be able to do, and then you can run basically to the end while camouflaged. After grabbing camo, Cody tries to grenade jump and fails horribly. He didn't attempt it again. Any semblance of this being a speedrun has now completely vanished and everyone in the room looks embarrassed for Cody. After a couple minutes, he does finally make his way out of the facility. But the level's not quite over yet. Yeah, we have what the game's finished, so we'll be going. Hey, I'm going, I'm going. Cody, you're over your time estimate by half an hour and still have four levels left. All right, we're through. As funny as him getting lost is, that could have been a whole lot worse. To start the library, Cody saves and quits and lowers the difficulty to normal. I will now remind you of this from earlier. I, I would I would go to Legendary for the library. Normal is obviously different than Legendary, but if I were running, I would still at least try to show off the Legendary speedrun strats when, you know, you're at a speedrunning event. So at the time, the strategy was to walk forward to get Guilty Spark to move up, do a grenade jump, run back to trigger Guilty Spark again, and make your way to the first door without fighting any enemies. Cody does none of this and instead opts to plot his way along in the most uninteresting way possible. He then dies at the very start despite playing on normal. And again. I thought, I thought the Flood had no one central nervous system, so they don't like... Well, the, the, the headshot is actually kind of in the body, sort of. You can't headshot Flood in CE, Cody. Speedruns of the library are actually pretty fun. There's a lot of cool grenade jumps and ways to get through some of the hallways. Not to mention now there's flood bumping, but Cody knew none of this stuff, and this level was just painful to watch. At one point, he started running back the way he came, didn't realize it for like 30 seconds. He was also getting bad checkpoint luck, and there were a few times where he died, missed a checkpoint, and went back two plus minutes. Pain. A little over the three hour mark, a woman enters the room before quickly making the correct decision to leave. I counted seven deaths for Cody on the library despite playing on normal. I can only imagine the comedy that would have ensued had he tried it on Legendary. He gets out of library in about 25 minutes, which, all things considered, is a win despite being almost 11 minutes slower than the Legendary world record at the time. Unfortunately for Cody, the next level is Two Betrayals. If you played Halo C before, you probably know the disaster that awaits. Two Betrayals now has an out-of-bounds trick involving a Banshee that's cool conceptually but kind of boring to watch, but classic Two Betrayals speedruns were actually insane. Not as much in 2011 as later years, the Legendary world record was still over 17 minutes, but there was a lot of cool stuff Cody could still try to do. Like, check this out. On normal, you can just slide down to the bottom of the pyramid and get in the Banshee while the Wraith is still shooting at you. Cody instead opts to slowly work his way down while killing every enemy at a moderate pace. Oh hey, there's a slide, and he died. And now he's back to the start because he didn't get a checkpoint. Nice. He's doing BK, he's, that would be Trekhawk. He's, he's, he's Dark Side Phil's nemesis. Dark Side Phil, now there's a blast from the past. So how about them Jets boys? <laughs> <laughs> How about that Julian Assange, huh? Yeah, Julian Assange. Check by him. At this point, they're desperately trying to find anything other than the game to talk about. How many times can we say Chevy Chase within the next couple minutes? Because we said it Chevy Chase. 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 Dan Aykroyd, never asking it. I can't do this anymore, dude. This room you can run past fairly easily, at least on normal. Even in the footage you're watching, I got kind of unlucky with my Flood and Elite spawns, but still made it through mostly unscathed. Cody doesn't go this way, because why would he? I'm so wanting this to end right now. Me too, Cody. Me too. Jericho, where everything was gray. You just drove over a health pack and rocket ammo. Grab it! Check this out in the second reactor room. I'm just gonna throw a couple nades, rush in and activate this, which does take down your shields, then use a rocket and grenade to get back out. The pulse generator overloaded. One more to go.
That was at least kind of interesting to watch and not that difficult. You got this, Cody. He's slowly trying to kill everything. There's a new Banshee to his right, and instead he grabs the old one with health damage. You cannot make this stuff up. There's an old strat that I don't know how to do because we don't use it anymore, so I'm taking this from the aforementioned Goat Ropes GDQ run in 2014, which is my favorite run ever. You're supposed to do the rest of the level on foot, but runners had this strat to get a ghost through the door. And to be clear, they were doing this at the time of Cody's run too. This lets Goat Rope drive to the end of the canyon to grab a Banshee, which he can then fly to the end with way quicker than if he had made his way on foot. Unsurprisingly, Cody doesn't even attempt the ghost trick and instead proceeds on foot. The remainder of the level takes him another 15 minutes. I know you guys are hating me right now. <laughs> no. This is one of the most awkward things I have ever sat through. So, someone, Cody, is trying to remind you there's a ghost um, somewhere. Ask them where, because I forget. Uh, by the shade turret. Even the chat is trying to backseat game for him. Okay, finally, we're free. So I was actually tallying how many deaths Cody had on that level, and he had, you know what, actually, instead of telling you, why don't I show you? Hit it, Johnny. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yeah, I know what uh, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Twenty-one. He died 21 times in one level playing on normal at an event where he was invited to play on legendary. It took him over 40 minutes on normal when the legendary record at the time was 1723. Anyway, on to keys. Keys should have been the shortest level of the run. This is another trick that I don't know how to do because it's an outdated trick. Back in Cody's day, you were supposed to do a shield bump out of bounds at the very start of the level, from which you can then do out of bounds platforming to get to the keys room. It turns a 20 minute level on legendary into a three to four minute level. Why, why can't you do the shield It's just extremely difficult. Okay, okay. At this point, I probably don't even need to tell you that Cody did not do this or even attempt it. You know what? Not. I don't even, I have no idea where I'm going. Oh god, not this again. He's actually making his way through fairly quick, at least by his standards to this point in the run. You can see Cody's in a groove. He starts talking about Metal Gear Solid. In, in Twin Snakes, suddenly Solid Snake is like straight out of the Matrix. Yeah, that For once in the run, he finally appears comfortable, and rightfully so, because despite not doing the skip that would have made this the shortest level in the game, he gets through it in a little over 12 minutes, on normal. Once again, on the Cody curve, this is a W. Cody's told us a couple times during the run that he's pretty good at the last level. Well, it's just the last level's all like a chase away from well, last level I'm good at, so no worries there. Cody for a long time had the world record on this level, the Maw, which was thought to be unbeatable due to a glitch he seemingly pulled off that no one had ever done prior or was able to replicate. There are hunters that bash open this set of doors and the doors on the other side, and you can use them to get on top of the map. This is called Cafe Bump. In anniversary graphics, you can see everything, but in classic graphics, you can't without some special maneuvering that they didn't know about back then. Cody magically gets vision, and long story short, now that we know what to do to get vision legitimately, we can say with confidence that what Cody did should not have worked. He cheated. At the time, this was just chalked up as a super lucky glitch. Alright, so I, radio I think I still remember most of the tricks on um, yeah. Let's get it, Cody. Show us how it's done. He already died. His next life, Cody attempts to do Cafe Bump, but again, this is before they knew how to get Vision, so I'm not sure what he was going to do after, but it's a moot point because he was holding forward for some reason and died and got sent back to the start of the level. After a third death at the very start, once again he's playing on normal, he finally makes it to the bridge. Later on in the level, he doesn't grab a hidden overshield. Some would say this is because he didn't know it was there, but personally, I think he was going for a risky time save called No OS Hunter Hallway. Bravo, Miller. Unfortunately, he could have used the overshield because Hunter Hallway takes him down to one red. Normally in the reactor room back then you do a small grenade jump up because it's a little faster and it can let you get all the reactors in one cycle without any waiting time. But because of his low health, Cody can't do this. He also walks up the wrong side but at this point it doesn't really matter. After blowing up the first reactor, Cody falls off and has to walk all the way back up. But eventually he gets the last three and is able to get on the elevator and start the warthog run. I would now like to flash back to a donation request on Pillar Bottom where someone asks Cody if he can stop to see the talking grunt. Five bucks for Cody to kill the talking grunt on the mob. Oh, um, yeah, but you can't finish the level.
You can't finish the level if you stop to see him. Well, here's footage of me stopping to see the run and still completing the Warthog run on Legendary with over a minute and a half remaining. I will give Cody credit for this. Solid, and then I love the, I still love the arrow that was pointed at us when we were driving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The arrow that went like this. He nailed that 360. And that's Cody's run, just under four hours and 17 minutes. His time estimate may have been two hours and he may have had to lower the difficulty to normal, but that's still a finished run that unfortunately did a lot of damage to Halo speedrunning at the time. Cody came back to GDQ the next year for a Halo Reach run that wasn't a complete disaster, like he did actually do a speedrun, but it was still really slow and bad, and a lot of people thought Halo speedruns were slow and bad as a result. Combine this with HighSpeedHalo.net not being very well run, the Halo Runs community was pretty dormant for a while, with it just being a small handful of people who communicated through Skype and recorded records on a Google Doc. GDQ didn't want to host any more Halo runs, and they had to fight to get a good Halo runner back, but they eventually got Mr. Monopoly invited to the January 2014 event to do an amazing Halo 2 run, which, combined with the newly formed HaloRuns.com, successfully brought Halo speedrunning back to life. Then in summer 2014, there was also Goat Rope CE run at the second GDQ event of the year, and later in 2014, the release of the Master Chief Collection, which had speedrun achievements and got a whole lot of people interested in learning routes for them and watching runners like Naked Eli. But yeah, Cody's run was really bad. It wasn't even that he was choking on tricks as much as he just wasn't good at the game. Like, even full path playing these levels should not have taken him as long as it did, and it's really painful to watch, especially after he lowers the difficulty to normal and is still sucking at the game. But if you are interested in watching good Halo speedruns, then the website to go to is haloruns.com, and for help doing runs yourself, join the Halo Runs Discord. All the tutorials and everything you need, you can find there. And if you like this video, then click the video on screen to watch me go over one of my old personal best speedruns, which is still almost three hours faster than Cody's. I'll catch you next time.